And the answer is C, I will survive. Now you're saying, what about Donna Summer? Well, she won five Grammys, but never for best disco song. And what about Saturday Night Fever? That won a Grammy for best album, not for best Grammy song. So now that we've got that settled, this has been the update music trivia question of the week. I'm Jennifer Lee. And now it's time for the update entertainment report with Danielle Sacco. So Danielle, I hear a lot of TV watchers are going to have to change what they do weekdays at 4. Yes, Cindy, I think I might be one of them. Oprah Winfrey is calling it a career. The queen of talk show recently announced she will end the Oprah Winfrey show after 25 years of being on air. The show is scheduled to come to an end in 2011. Winfrey says she's ready to move on to other projects, including the development of the Oprah Winfrey Network. Oprah is credited for paving the way for other daytime talk show hosts, such as Ellen DeGeneres. And it's Taylor Swift's world, and we're just lucky to be in it. It's been a remarkable year for the teenage singer. Swift recently won the Country Music Association's Performer of the Year Award and five American Music Awards. And now she signed a contract with the American Greeting Card Company. Taylor will design a line of greeting cards, gift wrap, and stationery. Swift's American Greeting product line should be in stores this spring. And the Temple Marching Band is the newest YouTube star. A video clip of the band performing its version of Sum 41's Fat Lip is receiving a lot of attention. In fact, members of Sum 41 have even seen the clip and put a link to the video on their website. This isn't the first time Temple's band has tried to perform a punk song, but they say this is the first time their effort has received such national attention. And the New Moon craze is on. The vampire film made almost $73 million in its first day. By comparison, the first movie in the franchise, Twilight, made $70 million in the first weekend. The first day ticket sales set the opening day box office record, beating The Dark Knight. New Moon welcomes back stars Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart and introduces Dakota Fanning to the cast. And our city features many attention-grabbing landmarks, but there may be nothing more eye-catching than the thousands of murals lining the streets of Philadelphia. Updates, Tyler Beck has more. Muralissimo was the 25th anniversary celebration of the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program that was held for the public at the Piazza at Schmitz. Muralissimo is the capstone of a 13-month celebration to celebrate all things mural in Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Mural Arts Program began in 1984 to reach out to neighborhood artists and use their talents to turn graffiti into art for the community to share. The city's first African-American mayor, Wilson Good, uh, became mayor and really campaigned on a promise that he would eradicate the graffiti problem during his time in office. The Philadelphia Mural Art Program is one of the largest public art industries of its kind. Working with over 300 artists per year, they have created 3,000 murals in the program's lifetime, making Philadelphia the mural capital of the world. Not only did this celebration offer live music, face painting, and other fun activities, there were also free mural tours to show the art that the programs created. The best way to see the murals is to take a mural tour. Um, we offer mural tours three times a week from April through November that lead from the Independence Visitor Center. Today, as a part of Muralissimo, we're offering free mural tours every half hour, and they've been a huge hit. If you missed your free mural tour, you can visit Muralissimo next year. Or you can take your own free mural tour by going to www.muralfarm.org to search for the murals near you. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Tyler Beck. And guys, the murals in the city are such a huge part of Philly's history. Yeah, it looks like those tours are really worth checking out. Definitely. Thanks, Danielle. Some students dress a little peculiar when attending classes, but we believe Justin Sloan wins the prize for the most bizarre outfit. This superhero costume is actually a class project. As Squidman, In Justin fact, can break off his no tentacles water, so and feed the starving world calamari. And he can also way. dispense ink to all the poor college students. We here at Temple Update hope Justin gets an A yeah. for his art project. I'm going to get the shot of him walking around. And there's nothing like homemade pumpkin pie this time of year, but what many people have to go, but many people have to go to announce a summer and autumn of heavy rain hurting the pumpkin harvest this year. The company is responsible for the majority of canned pumpkins sold in the United States. Nestle says they will not be packaging any more pumpkins this holiday season. 
Well, it was a paper covering rock that won this year's rock, paper, scissors competition. Players from all over the world traveled to Toronto, Canada to take part in the international competition. This year's champion is an American. After five hours and nine matches, Tim Conrad was crowned the world champion. Conrad received a trophy and a check for $7,000. Well, that's all for this edition of Temple Update. Be sure to follow us online at templeupdate.com. For Bryant Magic and the rest of the Update team, I'm Sydney Grant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.